Okay, we, we just talked about demand and the difference between a demand schedule and a demand curve on a graph and a demand equation. And we focused on the difference between a change in demand, which is an entire shift of the line or a change of the whole table and um, or a change in the equation. The difference between that and quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is just moving from one point to another along the same graph or moving up and down in a table. Your quantity demanded just means you're buying more because the price went down or you're buying less because the price went up. Quantity demanded. The same goes for supply. So let's change tax here and let's suppose that instead of me being a consumer that now I'm a producer. And so let's focus on supply. Suppose I'm a pizza producer and now we want to, here let me keep uh, those quantities there and we'll just, we'll add a new um, column here. So supply. Suppose I'm a producer. Now as a producer, what I'm going to be thinking of is, is the price goes up, I'm willing to pr spend more time to produce more. As the price goes down, I'm willing to spend less time and I'm going to produce less. I'm willing and able to sell less at lower prices if I'm a seller or a producer. So at a price of zero, I might be willing to not sell anything makes sense. Also at a price of two dollars I might be willing to sell none. Perfectly reasonable. If it costs you more than two dollars to produce something you're not going to be willing to produce any. It might not be until the price gets up to four dollars I might be willing to produce anything. So let's suppose at four dollars I might be willing to produce uh, two. At six dollars I might be willing to produce four. At $8, I might be willing to produce 6 etc. And at $10, I'd be willing to work harder and longer and sell 8 of whatever this item is. So this table here would be a supply schedule. We could make a graph of this information as well. So let me take this, bring this purple line over here and graph this information. Let's see, at a price of $4, I'm willing to supply 2, so 4 and 2, and at $6, I'm willing to supply 4, let's make sure, 6 and 4, yeah, so this purple line might represent my supply. So we have a supply schedule, we have a supply curve or a supply line represented by the purple line, and similarly we could have a supply equation. We just figure out the y-intercept here is 2, the slope is 1 half, and so my supply equation could be P equals 2 plus 0.5Q. So that would be perfectly fine. Let's just double check this. If we plug in a quantity of 4, 2 plus a half of 4 is um, a price of 4. Right, so that would be fine as a supply equation. Now sometimes it's easier to use schedules, sometimes it's easier to use graphs, and sometimes we'll find that it's easier to use equations to analyze these things. Just as when we were talking with about demand, each point along this line is a quantity demanded at a different, sorry, quantity supplied at a different price. As price goes up, the quantity I'm willing to supply, or the quantity supplied, will go up. As we go to different quantities supplied in response to price changes, so if the price in the market I can sell my product for goes from 4 to 6, then my quantity supplied will increase from 2 to 4. But we don't say the supply has changed. Again, we, res we reserve that word or that phrase, supply increasing or supply changing, for cases when the entire line shifts to the right or the left, or all of these quantities change. 
Um, if for some reason I wake up today and instead of being willing to supply uh, four at a price of six, I was only willing to supply two, that would represent a decrease in supply. We would have a new purple line, a decrease in supply. It has to be the entire relationship changing before you say supply decreased. Otherwise, I, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but you can't hear this enough. When you, when you start to get bored, that means that you're, you're really starting to understand it. What could cause a business to be willing to supply only two at a price of six instead of four at a price of six? In other words, what could cause a business to want to decrease their supply? The main things are going to be because cost changes. Something about the business's costs have changed. Now I'm less willing and less able to sell higher quantities. I'm going to supply lower quantities at the same price as I saw before. It could be that my employees wanted a raise. They went on strike and they wanted a raise. Or the government told me I had to pay my employees more or pay them more benefits or give them more time off. That could decrease my supply. Or the price of inputs. If we're talking about pizza, the price of the dough and the sauce and the cheese and the pepperoni, the price of those things has gone up. That's going to decrease the amount I'm willing to sell at a price of six dollars. Okay. Now let's look at a list of the things that can decrease uh, demand and decrease supply. Let me bring that up here. So here's a, a checklist that I like to go through in my classes uh, that lists what supply and demand are and just a short list of the main things that we think of when we talk about increasing or decreasing demand. So to review, you can think of demand as being the willingness and ability to buy various quantities at various prices. If one of these five things or something similar to it has not changed, then don't say demand has changed. In other words, if one of these five things changes, you can say that has increased my willingness and ability or decreased my willingness and ability to buy. It's going to shift the whole curve. So one thing we talked about before is your income or wealth has changed. That could increase the amount you want to buy at each price or decrease the amount you want to buy at each price. However, um, there are two different kinds of goods. A normal good is one where when your income goes up, that makes you want to buy more. However, there's also a kind of good called an inferior good, where if your income goes up, you want less of that product. Now, keep in mind, inferior doesn't mean it's a bad product. It simply means it's a kind of product where when your income goes up, you want to buy less. A typical example might be ramen noodles in the United States. Ramen noodles, uh, something that are cheap, uh, very cheap to buy. However, uh, they fill you up and, and when you're poor, you might buy a lot of these and eat them every day for lunch. However, when you are rich, if you, or if you inherited a million dollars, people will probably buy a lot less oodles and noodles or ramen noodles. It doesn't mean that it's a bad product. It just means that it's something that typically people will buy less of when they earn more money. Uh, also, um, generic brands of products. You might, when your income is low or when you're not wealthy, spend more for um, what we call no-name brands or store brands of products. However, when your income gets higher, you will switch and instead you'll buy name brand shoes or name brand um, cooking products or name brand crackers, for example. Um, also, something that can change the demand for a product in a, say, a city or a region is the population. The more people there are, the more of something will be bought or sold 
at the same price. If the population doubles, say in London for the Olympics, when the population increases, more is going to be bought of most products, even when the price set doesn't change. Uh, tastes and preferences. This is just a catch-all category um, because people decide, um, say, to be healthier, you'll eat less fat, fatty foods, for example. Um, or you just get sick of a product. You decide you like it less, or you, you decide that something is healthy or unhealthy, you'll buy less or more of it just because you feel differently about the product. Also, the prices and availability of other products is an important factor that can change the entire relationship between price and quantity. Complements and substitutes. Uh, Complements are things that go with another product. For example, peanut butter and jelly or ice and Coca-Cola. These things go together, at least in the United States. And so when the price of one goes up, you're going to consume less of the other good. Uh, a silly example is left shoes and right shoes. If the price of left shoes goes down, you'll want to buy more right shoes. Although usually they're bought in pairs. I agree, it's a silly example. Uh, substitutes are things that could be used instead of one another. For example, a substitute might be iced tea or lemonade. If the price of iced tea goes up, you're going to buy less lemonade even if the price of lemonade has stayed the same. So this can, these are things that can change demand, not the quantity demanded. Uh, lastly, uh, taxes. If the government puts uh, a tax on something, a tax on lemonade, that's going to make people want to buy less lemonade. Um, because they know when they buy the product, they're also going to have to pay the sales tax on top of what the real price is. Similarly, supply is just a short list of things that can change supply. Most of these have to do with prices or, or costs that a business, so I shouldn't say prices, I should say costs of producing a product. If technology makes something cheaper and easier to produce, that will increase supply. If there are more suppliers, that will increase the supply. Fewer suppliers, that will decrease supply. If the prices and availability of inputs changes, so if the price of steel goes up or is harder to get, that will decrease the supply of things made of steel. This price of other possible outputs changing, this means that if I'm a producer and say the price of um, motorcycles goes up, then instead of producing cars, maybe I shift my production lines over to produce motorcycles. So if the price of motorcycles goes up, the supply of cars could go down. Or a more typical example, think about hybrid cars and um, sports utility vehicles or trucks. If the price of cars goes up, the supply of trucks might go down. Why? Well, because if I can make more money selling cars, I'm going to shift my productive resources towards produ producing cars and away from producing trucks. And so the price of cars goes up, the supply of trucks will go down. There will be, in effect, fewer truck suppliers. More people will shift into cars. And lastly, taxes. Uh, if you tax a product that a business makes and you make the supplier pay the tax, that will reduce the willingness and ability of suppliers to produce that product because they know when they produce it, they're going to pay this extra penalty. That'll reduce the supply. It'll shift the entire curve. In the next video, we're going to practice uh, with some different uh, situations to see if we can identify which of these things are changing about demand or supply, and then we can use this information to predict the result. That's really the essence of using supply and demand. So in the next video, we'll practice some of these things.